Uh, DHEA, again another hormone producing the adrenal glands here and you're going to see very quickly in this because I've got a diagram for you that differentiates where all the, the two areas that the hormones are produced. You're going to see very quickly these adrenal glands are pretty important, right? So we kind of in functional medicine have known that for a long time that it seems like it's only us in functional medicine that really pay much emphasis to this unless you've got Addison's or Cushing's. Well, how many people are running around with Addison's or Cushing's as a percentage of the population? It's pretty slim. How many people are running around with some type of adrenal dysfunction? I always think about it like this. If you've got, if you've got let's say you've got a continuum and you're in the, a normal ideal is right in the middle of the continuum. Over here is Addison's disease and over here is Cushing's disease. You, to get from normal over to Addison's, what if I fall right here and I don't really fall into the range of diagnosed Addison's? Am I normal? No, I'm not normal. I still have a state of dysfunction. So that's the reason we can't really just go based on what traditional thought is on that. There's a state of dysfunction that comes along with these. I diverge. Um, <laughs> Your DHEA, most abundant hormone in the body. So it must be important in the fact that it's a precursor. And that's why I want us to think about DHEA. It's a precursor. It has to go to other hormones. And spe those specific hormones based on where these, uh, where these pathways fall out are going to be your androgens. You can get into your estrogens through this as well, but it's going to be the androgens. And it's going to have an anabolic effect. 